This year is about pursuing something great. This year is about the dream that I've had for as long as I can remember. This year is not about showing up. It's about making a statement. Trust me when I say this. The time is now. What's up everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel. How's everybody doing? I'm good, thank you for asking. Uh, we're back in today, we're in for legs. We've got a few things coming up in this video. We've got a food shop. I'm gonna update you on my current macros and maybe give you just a little bit of a, an idea of how I've pulled down my calories from the start to finish because we started above 5,000 calories. We're now at 3,000 odd. So we're gonna take you through a few things in this video, um, but stuff's getting hard, feeling lean. Uh, and the body is uh, feeling the repercussions of doing that for a very long period of time. But that is what it is. That is this game that we're in here. So I'm going to get my head down. I'm going to train hard. Um, familiar face on the channel in, in Desh. Maybe you guys would remember him from back in the OG days. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to get this session done. We'll see you after. Peace! That's the one. Oh. Nice. Good control, come on, keep moving. We'll take the 20s off. They're fucking annoying. See, this is like the same movement that we do in Orpington, exact same. But one's a cable and one's plate loaded. People just think, oh, same, same. It's not. The fucking plate is getting in the way. The mid range is heavier than anywhere else. It should drop off. So, you can feel the trap. That's it. Load this will make it much heavier in this range. And that's something that guys watching, you guys can think about that is you always, always, if you're a bodybuilder and you've got that mentality of trying to be better every single week, you can very, very easily slip into, I'm gonna let that form slip. So the importance of watching back videos, taking videos, getting someone to look at your form is always, always valuable. And at what point do, do you sacrifice form for weight? No point. Come on, come on, come on, drive, drive. Oh. Come on, Dash, let's fucking go. Control. Yep. Good. Come on, come on take it. Should have had two more. There you go. Two more. Ah. Strong reps. Strong, strong. Peace. One more, one more. One more. Ah. Come on, you're bringing up though. Come on. Get, get, come on, come on. Yes. So, put this one up here. And we're gonna we're gonna double band this. Uh, we're gonna double it over and double band it because otherwise we're gonna end up having about 500 plates on here. So we double it over. I haven't got all the equipment with me. Hang on. Two one or more. Daisy chains. Two one or more. Carabiners. Aren't you the owner of one or more? So uh, yeah, we've doubled it over. So the daisy chain is gonna go through. Once you uh, double it over, double the band over. And we're gonna wrap the daisy chain around here. Yeah, through both, because we want this band to be as tight as possible at the top, but also create a pretty big drop off. So, yeah, put it through there. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I'm so heavy at the top. So insanely tight up the top. We uh, did our first webinar yesterday for all of the JF Brigade, JF Brigade, Josh Brooklyn Fitness Brigade, uh, online coaching underneath me and my head coach, Ethan. Uh, we held a seminar for all of our clients. So guys, if you are ever interested in online coaching, that is like my, one of my main jobs along with one of our, uh, you can click the type form in the description box and apply and we can get you on a free discovery call with me or Ethan. Talk about your goals and set out your future. Back to legs. <laughs> Strong, strong, let's go. Go on. Uh, that is ooh, leg session done. Uh, I've moved my post or PM cardio to post workout. I think for me, from a mental standpoint, actually just from a physical standpoint, doing this cardio post-workout where my heart rate is already elevated from training. I don't have to like, you know, push myself really hard to get my heart, heart, heart rate up again. Whereas if I go home, I chill out, I calm down, the caffeine reduces in my body. And I do my second bout of cardio on the bike at like four or 5 p.m. Like not only does it just kill me on the bike, because I've already done it once, but it's so, it's so hard to get your heart rate up that second time. So I've just shifted that to post-workout. Um, ultimately, calorie deficit is gonna be the most important thing here. It's not gonna matter up to a point where that cardio is. Obviously, we try and keep it away from training so you can train the best that you can, but I've got it here. Post workout, 20 minutes. After my half an hour this morning. Let's get fucking chill. Okay, so we're just in uh, Sainsbury's. I'm gonna do my normal shop. I'm gonna get everything I normally do. We normally go to two shops, start at Sainsbury's, move over to Audi, because there's like things at different things, <laughs> different things at different supermarkets that I like. Uh, I used to shop at Waitrose. You spend 130 pounds every five days. I've now decided not to do that, and now I spend about 70 pounds every five days. So, the exact same brand, so. First of all, we've got some potatoes. That's kind of my favorite and go-to carb at the moment. Let's walk around and see what we need. We're gonna go for some taste of different sweet onions today. I put onions, salads, chicken, flavor. I love these uh, mixed salad bags. What I'm trying to do is get like different leaves. So this is all butterhead salad. This is all wild rocket, baby kale, beetroot. This is all baby leaf and rocket salad. So I try and get as many different like colors, textures as possible. Turkey breast, two percent fat. I actually don't get any chicken or beef here. I get all my chicken from a butcher, an online butcher. And my beef I get from Audi because it's three percent fat and not five percent. This is what I have to do, I have to check the calories always. Half a pot, half a pot, 43 calories. It's <laughs> getting straight in my basket. Same thing. This is also going. This is just low cholesterol, low fat. Wow. So this is eat lean cheese in 100 grams, 169 calories versus 400 calories. This is like higher protein, lower fat cheese. This is a big win, especially when your taste buds are strong from dieting. Big reason I come to Tainsbury's, get this big buck off yogurt pot. This is straight protein, pretty much. I often have like two, 300 grams of this in the middle of the day just to curb hunger, and it's just a nice protein snack. Easy little substitute for you guys, just changing normal milk to almond milk. It's like loads less calories. Even it's less than like uh, oat milk, like this oat milk is, is a little bit more. I just use almond because it tastes nice. Absolutely fine, it's a mini tortilla, 15 carb. It's quite hard to have like normal fajitas and tacos when you're dieting because the wraps are like 35 grams per cup, like it's ridiculous. Good for bulking, not good 
Yes. So, fun fact. I really don't drink water. When's the last time we drank water on its own? Well, you do. I don't. I drink this. Double concentrate squash. So I always stack up because I normally go to an Audi during the week. So I'm going to buy three of these so I don't run out. Get them in, son. Do people know this? That you can take the end, oh, of, a, end of a key off, use the back end of it, and you can stick it in a trolley. And it comes out. <laughs> Levels to the game, guys. Levels. That's so weird with the key just hanging up. <laughs> I haven't seen this anywhere else but 3% fat mints. Normally, people have the five. Oh, well, I don't want the five, I want the three because you get more calories from protein and less calories from fat, which means less overall calories, which means more food elsewhere. So if you haven't, you need to come get these Brooklyn protein puddings, caramel flavor, chocolate flavor, vanilla, 10 out of 10. I probably have, I probably have two of these a day. And they are the, some of the nicest tasting things. He, he had one yesterday. He understands where I'm coming from and now he's getting, also getting a tray himself. I haven't had one of the caramel ones in a long time. That one's not a pudding though, that one's just a yogurt. Oh. Gotta be the pudding. So if you can't find these, it's probably because of me. The final exclusive is brioche buns. They sell brioche buns here that have 23. 23 carb per, that is just so silly. Bearing in mind, we, I just looked at summer in, in Sainsbury's, so I wanted to see if I could get them in Sainsbury's. 40 carb in one bun. This is, I'm gonna, I'm having burgers, we're having burgers for lunch. Shut up. Honestly, 20, 23 carb. All right, and guys, that is, uh, shop's done. We'll go home, summarize what we got, and talk you through a uh, macros. Alright guys, I'm going to talk you through pretty much how my day is, pretty much every day. Now I do do it for fitness macro, so I do have meals that I do change things that are very, very occasionally, but largely speaking, I'm having the same stuff. This is one of them, and this is a variation of what I'm going to do normally. So just while I'm waiting for uh, my food to cook there, I'll talk you a little bit about through my, my calories that I So at the moment, um, I have training day and non-training day calories. Training day calories because we have a higher glycogen demand, a higher demand for food, so that's why we give it. Um, on those training days, I have 300 protein, I have 400 carb, and I have 40 fat, which is right around 3,000, just over 3,000 calories. Uh, Non-training days, it's about 2,600 calories, it's the same protein, 300, um, fats come, sorry, fats stay at 40 as well, but carbohydrates, um, they're not 400, they're like 275, so significantly lower, 400 calories lower on that day, um, but pretty much every meal is very, very similar. At the moment I wake up and I have kind of two bagel thins with 300 grams of egg whites, which is my protein and my carb carb carbohydrates, then I'll have like a potato and chicken meal. Always messing up with potatoes, and I'll show you after this what I do with my potatoes just to make them taste banging. Um, but also um, changing around the chicken and whatnot. Then I tend to have a beef meal in the evening, and having burgers quite a lot. Like I said, like we said earlier, we found those brioche buns, so we had burgers earlier on. Um, and I tend to like to get a, a meat meal, so I get some iron, get some metals, get some some vitamins that I can get from red meat. And then in the evening, I, I tend to have like a little bit of yogurt, so that's why I bought that big tub of yogurt with a little bit of like I put like zero calorie maple syrup in there from. Um, Walden Farms, use that a little bit, probably 300 grams of that, and then I have a few rice cakes and like a protein pudding that you guys saw me get, um, and then I'll have my final meal, which will be 60 grams of whey and 80 grams of Frosties and another protein pudding. <laughs> uh, I definitely have got room to take the protein pudding out, I've definitely got a little bit more room to put some more satiating foods in there, but I'm going to wait until we get a little bit deeper into prep to do that, and I'll probably pull out some of those protein puddings, but for now, 
I'm going to keep enjoying them. And then I drink like a zero calorie fat every now and again. Also, let me know what you think of these. These are like kimono joggers. These are absolutely never leave the house, but they're quite comfy. So I literally just, <laughs> as soon as I'm done for the day, these are like my, right, you're done for the day joggers. Proper comfy. All right, so with these potatoes, what I've done here is I've boiled them. I tend to use baby potatoes or salad potatoes. I've boiled them for 15 to 20 minutes. What you then saw me do then with the spoon is put it face down and just, just smash it a little bit. Sometimes they break apart a little bit too much. Sometimes they, they don't. And you can either air fry them, which I've done before, but it takes about 25 minutes. Or if you've got an oven that can go like 250 degrees, 275 degrees, then you're gonna get them done a lot quicker. And they're already cooked, right? So you're literally, the only goal here is to get the crisp on the outside. And if you use a little bit of that oil, like you can really crisp these up. It's really, really hot and it won't stay in focus and I can't get it in focus. But you can see they're crispy. You can put a little bit of garlic on top. I'm just gonna put salt for today, but it's like one way that you can do potatoes. Sometimes I cut them like chips. Sometimes I'll just like, I won't mash them. Sometimes I'll cut them like chips. Sometimes I'll do, we used to do like potato salads and stuff, but now this is like my, this is my, my preferred way. Now for the chicken that I've just overcooked, which comes up like this, still looks quite nice. It still tastes quite nice. Um, I use the air fryer pretty much every time because it saves me a bit of time. I can just bung it in there, which, which tends to kind of save me a bit of time. Um, and then I tend to just rotate seasoning. So I keep my seasoning the exact same. This is the one that I use today. And if you're not using this one, this is like GOAT, goated, absolutely amazing one that I use all the time. But I also, sometimes I do puri puri, sometimes I do Chinese. So I just literally change the flavor of the chicken. Well, I haven't got much flexibility of macros, but I've got flexibility with the seasoning I put on. Yes, seasoning has macros but seasoning for me is a non-negotiable. So I put like 15 grams of seasoning on with everything. Sometimes I don't even count it. And every single year, still coming shredded. So you don't need to limit yourself to foods that don't taste great, because this tastes great. This little beauty here, this one right here. If you haven't used it or you haven't tried it, from Aldi or Lidl, both of them stock it, you have to. It is 20 grams of protein, 160 calories. 120 of those calories come from protein, a little bit from fat, a little bit from carbs. It is one of the nicest tasting things I've ever put in my mouth. I have two of these a day. Like I said, I probably have to sacrifice one soon, but for now, it's going straight into my mouth hole. So I'm gonna sit down and eat this, drink a little bit of a Coke Zero. Yes, a little bit of caffeine in there, but I'm gonna try and step a little bit later today because I've been waking up at 5 a.m. every day and it's been killing me. But in, in waking up at 5 a.m., I've naturally been falling asleep at like, half eight, nine o'clock, so I'm gonna try and stay up past then and try and just wake up a little bit later because nothing's happened at five o'clock in the morning. Hmm, good morning. We slept good last night. I think I said I was going to bed a little bit later last night. Managed to manage to fall asleep about quarter to 10, which is pretty early for me, pretty late for me. Uh, and I woke up at five and I was like, you're going back to sleep. So I went back to sleep to past to quarter past six and now it is quarter past seven. I've been doing some work on my laptop. And I wanted to just run this by you guys and, and just wanted to ask your opinion before we wrap up the video. So obviously guys, we're eight weeks out now, literally exactly. Tomorrow is eight weeks out, eight weeks in one day. No, eight weeks out exactly. That is the One Bro Pro Show in Maidenhead, which is in England, which is very, very feasible. Obviously it's probably gonna be one of the best opportunities for me to do well this year. Then we've got the Tampa Pro, which is the week after the sixth. So we fly, we compete on the Saturday, I fly on the Monday, I compete on the Saturday in Tampa. I then fly to Texas on the Sunday, and I stay in Texas for the week, and then I compete in Texas on the 14th, which is the following week. Then pretty much my season is done. Obviously, we just found out that I didn't get the invite to the Arnolds, which I'm absolutely gutted about. We didn't really get a reasoning for it, um, but what an opportunity it would have been to compete in my debut season in the Arnolds what an opportunity it would have been. But unfortunately it wasn't to be, so huge good luck to everyone who is competing. But that was gonna be on the end of September and actually that was gonna be my last show of the year. So that's cut my season short. So in doing that, I've had a little ear prick. I've had a little look on the, the website and I've just spotted the Vancouver Pro. Now Vancouver is, and it wasn't in my plans because it's so fucking far away. Uh, it's like the far side of Canada, Canada. Um, so it's obviously very expensive to get there. 
Uh, it's a very expensive city as well, so I didn't want to go and spend th like thousands of pounds. It's six hundred pounds for a flight. It's going to be one hundred and fifty pound a night for an Airbnb, a cheap Airbnb that I can stay in myself. It's going, to, it's going to cost me thousands of pounds, and I knew that I didn't want to spend that thousands of pounds knowing that I was going to America. But now that I'm not doing the Arnold Classic because I haven't got the invite, my ears are like, mm, "Could I do that now?" The Vancouver Pro is on the seventeenth of July which is 13 days before my first show, which means I would be technically six weeks out, just over, six, literally six weeks out to the day. Um, so we would basically just shorten that time by two weeks, and I'm very, very tempted by it now that my my shows have been cut short, so it would be potentially, and I want you guys to think, like, do you think I should push for that one? Um, I've talked to my, my coach, and I'm, I'm rambling now, so this is for the guys who, who stick with it. Uh, I spoke to my coach and he said that actually the final look would not be affected because I'll be home early enough after Vancouver. I'll be home on the 18th, enough to clear the fluid from the long fl long flight, um, which would be really, really fine. And then I'll be back into my routine to compete on the 30th. But it's going to be a slog to get there in six weeks. Um, I've obviously only been dieting for eight weeks, so it'd be 14-week prep altogether. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. The 17th of July, the Vancouver Pro Men's Physique. I may well be doing it. I have just requested the contract so I'll read through the contract and just see if I can pull out I think you can pull out a week before so I'm going to leave it another week I think I'll decide on the 13th which is a week Monday see what the fat loss progress is like from there and maybe do it anyway guys hope you guys enjoyed the video we'll be back very soon peace and love everybody bye bye watermelon sugar